hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I hope you've subscribed as well or I'll be coming to pay you a visit. <laughs> I'm Peter Fury and uh, don't forget to subscribe to Porky's Corner because I've been a helmet of the month and you need to listen to me. <laughs> yeah? So follow him, yeah? And get the fella some followers up for Christ's sake. He wears his hat on his sleeve, the good man was. So follow Porky's Corner, he says it as it is and uh, you know, I appreciate the helmet of the month, Russ. <laughs> no problem. No problem, thank you very much. You're welcome. Mate. The bomber tattooed on his back is of course a reference to his potent punch power and not in any way insensitive to the tragedy which unfolded in this arena when Ariana Grande performed Manchester will never forget. Go on. And I don't, yeah, nobody wants to pay too much tax. I don't want to pay too much tax, but I've been hammered. Came back from Jersey and they went back 12 years and some other way, which I've, I felt I didn't get the right advice from when it was a prize water house Cooper. I, I, I didn't, I paid a lot of money to them to advise and represent me and they, I can't, I'd never go back to them again. Um, because I don't think they give me the best advice. Uh, and end up paying a, a lump, lump, lump more tax. They went back 12 years when they should have only gone back three years. But uh, because my, my paperwork wasn't 100%, in, you know, oh, right, it's my fault for not getting But I paid a lot more tax than I should have done. But again, didn't get the best advice, but I'm still here. Uh, and, and I've got my lovely wife and my kids. And, uh, and I have as much money as maybe I, I, I would have had. But the point I'm making is. I don't mind paying decent tax as long as everybody contributes. Let's like all company whether it's a ten a week or ten million quid a week in tax. Let's all do something, contribute before we take out. There's too many takers in the country. Is that right or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I... Too many takers. They want to hit your ride and boxing optimizes that. But same with this country. People want to come here and pumps. Now, if you say anything... You're racist. You're racist. Doesn't matter what colour, what religion, put in to take out. That should be the motto. Give to receive. If you want to receive something, you've got to give something first. Hey, when your kids go to school, your your little red use as bright as a button. What is he using? He's using a pencil, everyday pens, crayons exercise book who is providing them it's public money people who's paying the taxes who's paying for that for your little one to be a, a, hopefully a genius now if you lived in a country where there's no welfare state there's there's nobody buying or putting into a system where there's any books or pens or whatever your little one will miss out on his genius because, so that's what this country provides. So unless everybody's putting in, and that's what I'm saying, going back to Branson, 
if he's contributing, let him. He deserves to take something out. If he's not, and he's taking it all out of the country, uh, and he's a, in a taxi and he's and he's, and he's finding a, finding a loophole, then uh, he's benefited from not paying the tax in the past. So how can he ask for something now? Yeah. Am I right? I'm You're right. right yeah. I mean, they're only my opinions, Russ, but there's, there's majority of people in this country agree with me. But <laughs> too many are not scared, but don't want to speak up for getting down cry or for being racist or whatever. Uh, I'm not racist. I just don't like people punching. And and it's same in boxing and same in this country. Give to receive. I've put, I've grafted, and. And people whose fathers or whoever or people who come to this country graft and take out, of course. If you graft, you deserve to earn. You deserve to be successful. But don't sit on your arse and, and, and play the victim like certain people are in boxing. Oh, woe is me, they've done this, I'm in depressed and all that. Everybody's jumping on bandwagon. Nah, there's genuine people who are have got men, mental uh, disorders and problems and depression. But... It's like the, the, the buzzword at the moment, I know, I'll say I'm depressed, I know, I'll say I've took a, an overdose. Uh, yesterday. Well, have a look in the mirror. Too many people don't look in the mirror and see the true picture. That's what. That's what's wrong. Uh, we live in a fantastic country and it's not run like it should. We should have still one of the best militaries in the world. We've got a fantastic military, we've got a fantastic NHS. If there will never be enough money to fund the NHS how it's run. Never. It's just a political tennis ball. The NHS is the fantastic people work for the NHS, but it's mismanaged. There's too many people skimming, creaming out of the NHS. If it was run as a proper business, as a proper business, and they go, oh, no, you want to privatise it. No, it should be run as a proper business because too many people who are employed by the NHS are poncing management. I'm not talking about them nurses and doctors people above them, the management, who are creaming and have got deals with pharmaceutical in, uh, companies who are getting looked after one way or another. There's people feeding off that NHS, which is a oh, must be. And it's the same like with people feed on other people's money. And that's yeah. what it all comes down to, public money. People funding it. There'll never be enough money in NHS uh, and, and still it's run, and still it's run properly, as a properly run organisation, this country will be so wealthy and so run. The military, for example, we chucked a bit more money at military. People say, why do we need more military? Well, you, you won't have countries like Russia flying into our airspace, uh, sailing the, the, the warships into our waters because they think we're too weak to, to stand up to them. Well, for not a lot more money, I've got pals who's, who's been in the military and are still in the military. Uh, they said, look, for not a lot of money, the, the Russians, we could we, we could stand up to the Russians and people like that. We're not nowhere near as big as them, but as capabilities are, not far off. So if we didn't waste all the money for people coming in and pouncing and draining and taking out of this country, we would still be a major, major force. That's why, like him or love him, I don't like some of the stuff that Trump comes out with. But if I were Boris, I'd be building... I'd be putting... I'd tell you what I'd do, Russ. I'd have a... Uh, I'd build another... Uh, a, a UK Anglo-American car. I'd man start manufacturing cars here that could challenge the BMWs and the Mercs and the VWs and the Audis. We so we're not reliant on 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 Europe for us cars. We're not reliant on China like we have been for too much. The world's got to change now. We've got to start manufacturing. We've we've the EU took a lot took a lot of our manufacturing out of this country and subsidise it with EU money and guess what EU money is where we pay more in than, than we get out for every pound we get we put in we get about 35 pence out so people go oh we've got EU subsidies it's our money that we're paying ourselves back with and we don't get as much back as we put in it's ludicrous ludicrous that's why I voted for Brexit so, anyway, that's my political broadcast at the end of this show. Russell. All right, well, I just want to finish off on, uh, what do you think about the EIS at Sheffield, lottery-funded, uh, all matching fighters up there? Do you think that's right? Well, I've said this before. 
how can it be right where public money again funds that facility up there and it's and it's and it's what 500 yards from where i was born at Attercliffe. that mm. um the it's funded by public money back at aj scrapyard isn't it yeah you've got the gb boxing funded by public money so on a for a conveyor belt and you've got all the facilities you've got oxygenated rooms and all sorts the the uh up to date the, the leading with the leading uh, uh country in the world obviously we're on the boxing scene because we've got the best facilities and funded and then you've got a conveyor belt for eddie to go oh thank you with all your public money now i'll go and make money off you and with you mm. they've already it's already like not building a car from scratch it's built a rolls royce is there you just got somebody to drive it nobody's had to build that that car it's there built and it's pristine it's, it's high performance then all you're doing is it oh and eddie's the driver turning up just to drive it out at showroom already paid for for nothing thank you very much i'm going on a journey with this now yeah it, it's wrong isn't it and nobody's wrong. questioning it in outer commons nobody's or anything it. and it's on our back doorstep and do I, can I just walk in there and use that facility? No, yeah, because I know Robert, get on well with Robert, uh, Robert McCracken, Bert, and, and Richard does, and we, we can use some of them. But Eddie has got the monopoly on that, because uh, through through uh, GB Boxing, through Robert McCracken, he's wrong. Yeah. That's going to be, it should be opened up to everybody, and everybody should be able to, to, uh, bid for any of those fighters but he's got the conveyor belt he gets the first pick and they've got all that fantastic facility to get the best out of each kid it's it's it's, it's monopolizing it's not a level playing field is it ron no it's not a level playing field and people are like, oh, having sour grapes well i not well i can walk away from boxing now i'm just telling you how it is uh I'm, I, I, I love this sport um but Fair's fair, and it's not fair. Yeah. And it's not a level playing field. I'll back myself on off any level playing field. I respect all the promoters up and down the countries who put a lot of these other shows on besides Frank and Eddie, because I know what hard slog it is. You you've seen bits yeah. of it, what an hard slog it is, and you invest your money. You say you you've said to me, are oh, you losing money on that? I'm not. I mean, I class it as investing. Yeah, it costs me money. But I'm taking a punt on trying to get kids up there, and hopefully, uh, when we get to them to a level, we can get some television back in because they are a commodity and a brand that kids, that the TV want to see, and that's what I'm trying to do on a smaller scale with uh, with, with your Tommy Franks, and that's why I'm trying to build five sub like your Sonny Edwards. That's my motive in doing things like that. So I'm doing it the hard way. Yeah. Uh, let's finish off on. Uh... A fun, a, fun, a bit of banter here. Would you have another coin toss with Frank Warren? Of course. <laughs> oh, what pride is it? <laughs> no, it's, I grew up gambling. Then my dad were a compulsive gambler. I grew up racing grounds and going in betting offices and casinos. And if it hadn't been for football and boxing, I'd have probably ended up a compulsive gambler like my dad because I got the, I got the compulsion to to want to have a bet. From a young age, I started me started gambling at eight years old. Yeah. Um, so and I used to get on two buses when I hardly saw my dad because my dad weren't at home a lot. Um, and I'd go, we, you know, you might call them dead end kids, or for want of a better expression, you know, were from different parts of Sheffield, Parsons Cross, and all that. And they'd be sat there waiting, and they'd have about a quid in the pocket. I'd have about three quid, and I'd go and ask. Oh, fellas who were of an age to, who could have a bet because obviously I'd be about 11 or 12 at that time and I'd ask them to put me a, a forecast or a, or, a, or a place or a win on you know 10 pence forecast because you know that's what the bets were at that time and they used to have to stand aside and wait at the kiosk and so women didn't see that it would mean what we're having a bet and I'd so and then I'd get on a two 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 buses two pence each to get back home on my own <laughs> so just, and just to just to go and have a bet. So I grew up with that, with that compulsion. I just wanted to, you know, I loved having a bet. And then I started racing my own grounds. So it's in me to have a gamble, uh, mm. and that's what business is in a way. But obviously, calculated gambles, isn't it? But so, yeah, didn't, didn't you buy a? Didn't you buy a? 
by a, a greyhound off Terry Curran. No, he bought it off me. He bought it off you. We played for Wednesdays, didn't he, or United? Yeah, Alan Mine. Uh, we played from both breeds. Big Wednesday night. He had his best years at Sheffield Wednesday. Fantastic footballer. Character, uh, Terry. Uh, great player and all. Great player. He signed that book, didn't he, for me for your birthday? He did. I've uh, got a plenty of respect for Tell. TC. Well, I wish we got him now, Tom. Well, at Wednesdays. Yeah, I wish you TC on the wing. TC on the wing. What a player. Yeah, he should have played for England, shouldn't he? Yeah, should have done. Great player. Mm, Great brilliant. Player. That's been brilliant, Dennis. That's uh, all right then. Well, hope you were. You've got a coat for me, haven't you, and your boot? <laughs> your yeah, car? Yeah. All right, yeah. well, I'll get it after it virus then. It. You better hurry up and get it. <laughs> on eBay <laughs> oh is it that bad <laughs> job's, job's not that rough for us now no no I, I, doubt, I doubt it is <laughs> you're down to your last five mil <laughs> so alright then well hey you are not guilty your honour <laughs> yeah. right uh, thanks for coming on uh, this will be out probably another week because we're going to jazz it up a bit and uh, have a good Sunday Dennis Daniel Rush, give right. love to your, your family and uh, right. keep doing right things, Rush. Alright, you take care. Same to you, mate. Alright, take care. See you, love. Bye, right. bye, right. And that were it. That were Big Ron Lyle's story. Uh, bit of banter, bit of boxing talk, bit of truths. The truth hurts. Like I said, if anybody doesn't like what we spoke about, who cares? You know, it's just a bit of banter, in it, to keep you all occupied. I know you're all listening over there at Steffi's gym, eh? You're all listening, aren't you? <laughs> eh? Oh, don't you worry, Steffi. We've got a Steffi Ball feature film coming out, and you've got a starring role. <laughs> it's only banter. It's only banter. That's about it for today. It's two o'clock on a Sunday. I'm going to grab a bottle of water. I think Dennis has uh, probably run his second off a glass of Shiraz there. And he's going to have his dinner. So, I enjoyed that. Uh, straight talk. Uh, that's what it's all about, isn't it? It's all about having a bit of banter and uh, putting the story right. I hope nobody's offended out there. I hope you're well, uh, all you listeners. And uh, that's about it, really. Big shout out to Innovation Alloys, South Yorkshire Packaging, Coca Cola. Big shout out to you all. Peace out. <laughs> you like that one, didn't you? Right, first of all. I just want to say thank you very much for liking and subscribing, it means a lot to me, because uh, we're on this journey together aren't we? So anybody got any ideas for the channel, fire them over to me, porkycorner at mail.com, alright? Shout out to Innovation Alloys and South Yorkshire Packaging, alright? Don't forget to subscribe, keep on trucking. <laughs>